Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'm going to show you round 4 from Limone. Uh, this was the most complicated game I played in the tournament, even though most of them were really sharp and could have gone either way, <clears throat> all three ways. Uh, this game I faced an 1800 player, very experienced though, and he defeated a 2150 in round 1, so I definitely did take him more seriously than other low-rated players, because he had already proved himself. I had the white pieces, and uh, I, I was debating on whether I should play e4 or d4 or move 1. Decided to go for the London in the end. Now, what happens in this game is very thematic, and for any London player, uh, this game should be a model game on how to handle complex middle game positions in reverse ready or king's indian setups for black okay so he went d6 on move one uh, i played knight f3 uh, knight f6 bishop f4 and g6 so going for the king's indian now still uh, if if b6 is played and c5 we are going into a reverse ready which is a position i know well uh, so uh, c3 just starting slowly, bishop to g7, h3, I don't want to allow any knight h5 ideas, uh, castles, e3, knight bd7, this is all very normal, has been played a million times, c5, castles. Now I play this with both colors, obviously when I'm black uh, in this position, I'm a tempo down, not that it matters that much, uh, but it, it could be relevant, some plans do change. Okay, he went a6, I went a4, and now of course he doesn't want to allow me to play a5, block the position up, so he plays b6. Okay, knight b to d2, bishop to b7, bishop to h2. And this is sort of the starting position of uh, the London against the reverse ready. Uh, it, for black there are several ways to play, uh, the most common way to play is to go queen to c7, I have faced rook a7, uh, I have faced, faced rook c8, I have also faced knight e4. In fact, in a game I'm going to show you in a few days, uh, with colors reversed, my opponent played the rook a2 in this position, or rook a7, uh, if he had had the black pieces. Uh, so, so many ways to play. My opponent played rook c8, and now for white, there are several ways to play. There are a couple of ideas which uh, you should be aware of. The first one is... When you play this position uh, a tempo down, or when you play it with the black pieces, the main idea is to play the move b4 and uh, sort of break through on, on the queen side, open up the c-file. Uh, when you have the white pieces, there are better ways to play, because you have that extra tempo. Uh, so one of the ideas is to put pressure on the, on the a6 pawn with bishop to d3, which may seem strange considering that you'd already played bishop to e2, and after queen to c7, you simply go queen e2. Now, this idea is twofold. Uh, after rook a8, defending the pawn, the idea is to play e4. So you put pressure on a6, and also the queen on e2, and the bishop on d3, both support the e4 pawn. Black really should play e5 here, and the position gets complicated. Uh, other ways to play are queen to b3. This is sort of the main idea, and after queen to c7, rook f to d1. Again, uh, going for queenside play uh, and uh, in preparation for any e5 break, your, your rook is perfectly placed. Uh, you can also simply go rook to e1 and after queen to c7 go bishop to d3, preparing e4, now queen b8, e4. And finally, uh, what I find the, the most pleasant for white uh, and for black, uh, because this is what I play with both colors, is queen to b1. The idea is sort of strange, but after queen to c7, you go rook f to c1 or rook to c1, and you put immediate pressure on the queen side. Now, uh, b4 isn't really uh, that good because you would end up trading all the pieces off. So after queen to b8, uh, after after b4 takes takes rook takes queen takes rook c8, queen to b1. Uh, this is sort of equal, and black could also just go queen to c7, take the c-file, so that's not the idea. The idea is to put pressure on the entire board and provoke weaknesses from black. So I played queen to e2 here. This position has been played only a few times, and this queen is excellent on the a2 square. The bishop could come to c4, the knight could come to g5, there is pressure along this diagonal, so any e5 break 
isn't really useful. Also, if the knight moves away from d7, you could consider dc taking away from the center because the d-pawn is pinned. Uh, that would open up the b-file and give you some more space. Okay, my opponent played bishop to d5 here, which is the critical move. And this position I don't know, but I was expecting uh, bishop to d5 because it seems fairly obvious. And now white has an option. Retreating the queen to b1 uh, is an idea because that would give you e4 with tempo later on. Uh, also, the a6 pawn is hanging. So in the event of queen b1, bishop to b7, e4 seems very strong. Again, that could be met with e5. Let me show you that. So here, here, and here, and e5, and probably d5. And now the scary thing about positions like this is the idea with knight to h5, where you are basically forced to give up your bishop on f4 because the knight on f4 cannot be tolerated. The problem with that, let's say white does nothing and takes and takes and takes, is that black gets the e5 square for his pieces. Now your bishop on h2 isn't really useful, uh, so giving it up for the f6 knight is okay, but knight e5, bishop e5 in conjunction with f5 <clears throat> gives black too much activity. Um, so I really wasn't going to go for this. So after bishop to d5, uh, I played the obvious move, c4. Okay, now the bishop retreats back to b7, and I played d5. If black does nothing, then white has a very simple plan. If well, Let's say black does nothing for two moves. Queen to a8, e4, queen to b8, e5. And white is already better. We've broken through. We can give up this pawn because... It's not going to be that hard to, to, to get it back. Also, there's a ton of pressure along the diagonal, and maybe the rook comes to e1. Uh, it's going to take some time for, for, for black to defend the pawn. Meanwhile, we, we have pressure. So black needs to react quickly, and my opponent does. And my opponent played excellently from this point on. He played much better than I did. Uh, I had ideas that were flawed. And he exploited them perfectly. Okay, so b5. That, that's the move you have to play if you go for this position. Now, my opponent played very quickly. So he was either familiar with, with a position like this or he's just really good. Okay, so I have to take that. That's clear. I have to take once. So a, b, a, b. I don't want to take again because I lose my pawn on d5. Uh, and here I made a positional mistake which on my level really should not be happening. So uh, I I would like you to learn a lot from, from this exact position you can see on the board. You can pause the video and try to think. It's fairly complex and you have a couple of options. So have a look at it, figure out what you would do uh, with the white pieces. Okay, so one key idea is that after you defend the pawn, which I ended up doing, uh, Black gets so much play and gets the A-file and gets more space. Therefore, B3 is, is a mistake which could be classified as a blunder even. So my opponent exploited it well. He played knight e8. I have to move my rook. Okay, okay b1. And now b4. And all of a sudden, I, I have a, an extreme lack of space. Rook a3 is coming in the future, no doubt about it. Uh, my pieces are sort of loose along the second rank. What's my queen doing on a2? Uh, where is my attack? Why is this bishop so bad? I have no pawn breaks. e4 will take a ton of time to prepare. The correct way to play this position, which I'd looked at but thought b3 was better, was just to defend the d5 pawn, so e4. And if b4 now, this gives me the b3 square for my knight and for my queen. So let's say takes. I take with the queen. You now if knight b6, which seems obvious, I just go queen to c2. And again, now I'm the one with the pawn break. I can play b4 in the future. I have the c4 square for my knight controlling e5. So probably black is going to have to trade that off. And I can slowly prepare e5 in the future. This is a Benoni position in which black has... Uh, no thematic counterplay on the queen side. There's no rook on a8. This bishop is still blocked. B2 is sufficiently defended. So this would have been correct. 
Instead, after B3, I got a, a position that, fine, the engine still says it's equal and, and everything is okay, but I'm giving up so much space. Uh, and black has such easy play that white is practically worse. Okay, so again, a3 square for the for the rook, c3 square for the bishop. If I'm going to justify my play, I have to start the kingside attack. Why is that? Well, all of these pieces are sort of cut cut off from the kingside, and black is defending with knight, bishop, and rook, while I can get these three into play, uh, my queen as well. <clears throat> so I started doing that. Queen to c2, queen to c7, preparing rook a8. And now e4. The idea behind e4 is not only to defend the d5 pawn and to play e5, it's to give my queen the e3 square, which may seem slow. Uh, th this was one of my good ideas. Uh, this gives me the option to a uh, double up on the diagonal and, and trade off the bishop, and b support the e5 uh, push. Okay, so rook a8, queen to d3. Rook a3, queen to e3. He played bishop c3 here. And I should mention that the engine always wants me to sack the exchange here. And that makes a ton of sense. I did consider it, of course, uh, but I wasn't really sure whether giving up the exchange is the correct idea. If I don't give up the exchange, this, this bishop is great and black holds the A file forever. So rook c3, always, always a good option. I never played it. I played queen h6, uh, threatening knight to g5, so bishop g7 uh, is basically the only move f6, uh, not good. If f6, I just go h4, h5. Okay, bishop g7, queen drops back to e3, bishop drops back to c3. I don't want to repeat, of course, so bishop to f4, e5. Okay, now this is the second critical position. Uh, after the one where, where my opponent played uh, a, b, and I played b3. I can take Ampasan or I can play bishop h6. Uh, what I didn't consider correctly is that bishop h6 leaves my pieces sort of congested on the king side and I have no maneuvering space, while at the same time these two knights are defending everything perfectly. So, if I take Ampasan, and my opponent takes, and I go bishop to h6, he goes bishop to g7, I take, he takes with the knight. Uh, I go queen h6, this was my calculation during the game. Uh, let's say he ignores me, just plays rook a8, and I go knight g5, he can defend, so there, there's no attack there. I could go bishop g4, putting pressure on the e6 pawn, but nothing's really happening. For example, rook a2, knight e f3. This position should be okay for me, but I don't see a clear way forward. I can try to put pressure on d6, but there's no chance of winning the pawn. <clears throat> also, a3 could be loose. So even though visually this seems nice, I couldn't see a clear way to make progress, unless I manage to trade off one of the knights at least. So I ended up playing bishop to h6, which is okay. Uh, this should be the better option. now. Uh, the problem with bishop to h6 is that, again, I leave these two squares unattended and that the lack of maneuvering space means that even though I have more, more pieces on the king side, there's no easy way to use them. Okay, knight g7 doesn't want to lose the exchange. And here, bishop, uh, the bishop really has to be taken according to the engine. At this point, I didn't consider taking the bishop anymore because it's sort of blocked in. And even though it looks nice, it, I, I don't think it can, do, it can do much damage. Of course, after rook a2, bishop d4, if this knight moves, there's pressure on f2, but that's a long way away. So I played <coughs> knight to g5, which is a mistake. A knight to g5 puts pressure on e6 uh, and puts pressure on f7, puts pressure on h7. He played rook f a8, completely ignoring me. And again, rook takes c3 should be the, the best move. I played knight f1. At this point, black is already better. Uh, according to the engine, the advantage is significant. It's minus one. I thought I was better, which shows a complete lack of uh, understanding in this position. I thought that uh, a3 and c3 as weaknesses weren't enough to compensate for the pressure on the king side. But the reality is that there is no pressure on the king side. 
So what do I do? I would have to go h4, h5 to open up the position. It's just too slow. Okay, knight f8. In this position, I can go knight g3 or knight h2. I went knight h2, which again is a mistake. Uh, knight g3 gives me more hope uh, for h4, h5. After knight h2, the position is minus two and a half. So according to the engine, black is winning this position. Uh, he luckily made a mistake in this position. The best way to play is rook to a2, and it makes a ton of sense. Uh, I retreat one of my knights to f3, and he opens up the position with f5. And this becomes scary. Okay, bishop to f1, uh, fe4, queen e4, knight f5. This is just overwhelming already. I mean, wh when you see it like this on the board, then it becomes apparent uh, that, that black is better and why black is better. My opponent played queen e7, which isn't bad. He should still be he should still be better. And I blundered. Uh, I played queen to g3. After queen to g3, practically and objectively, uh, white is losing. Uh, I wanted to increase the pressure, but I basically trapped my queen. Uh, and here is how to exploit this. Now, this position is not easy. My opponent didn't see how to punish me, uh, but when I show you the first few moves, it's going to become clear. He played f6 here, which is okay. Black is still better, but after rook a2, black is winning. <coughs> okay, so I have to move my bishop, bishop f1, and now bishop to d2. That's the key move. Okay, I save my exchange, rook to d1, now bishop to f4. Okay, I have to keep defending my knight. I cannot move my queen away to d3, so queen h4. Now f6, the bishop, the, the knight drops back to f3, which is the only move, and now g5. And after queen g4, bishop to c8, and game over. That That's just it. There is nothing I can do. The game is over. So after queen g3, my, my opponent could have won the game straight away with a series of forcing moves. Uh, first attacking the bishop, then attacking the rook, then attacking the queen, and finally trapping the queen. Instead he went f6, I dropped back, rook a2, attacks the bishop, bishop to d3, bishop to c8, and now I start getting scared, of course. Uh, the same idea is applicable here, just trying to trap my queen, so I just snap the knight off. Uh, I don't want to allow knight h5. After knight h5, I have no squares for my queen. So queen takes and queen h4. Uh, I'm still losing, uh, but it's not that easy to win. g5, queen to g3, knight to g6, rook to d1, defends my bishop, h5, and here I played knight to f1. Uh, Try to guess the evaluation of this position. Uh, this is minus eight. Uh, black is completely winning. I got outplayed. Uh, I trapped my queen. Uh, I made my pieces completely mobile. Uh, so two games in a row I played really poorly. Uh, the, the, the game before this I had a tough loss with the black pieces. Uh, which I still hadn't recovered from before this game, but that that's no excuse. This is just I'm just getting crushed and outplayed. This is as if I were playing a 2400 player and he's just killing me. I I cannot move any of my pieces. Uh, in this position, my opponent played knight f4. Uh, there was <clears throat> a much simpler win with h4. I think I would have resigned after h4 uh, because I can only play queen h2. Now he plays knight f4. <clears throat> Let's say I play knight e3 takes on d3, rook takes d3, and queen h7, and that, that's about it. I can I can give up a pawn several different ways. Whichever way I do it, I, I lose the game. So for example, knight g4, takes, takes, queen e4, and that's it. Instead he went knight f4, uh, I went knight e3, and here he gave me a chance. He took on he took on d3 which helps me a lot. Uh, he should have played h4, again going for the same position. h4, queen h2, knight d3, uh, uh, and and rook d3 and queen g6, again putting pressure on e4. But he went knight e2 check, which gives me some chances. Black is still winning, don't get me wrong, but this is easier. Takes, takes. Rook f1, I want to defend f2, and queen to g6. 
And here, of course, I'm losing the e4 pawn, but at least I can complicate the position. I played knight d1. <clears throat> now here, I'm threatening to take the bishop, uh, and if the bishop is taken, uh, then after queen e4, I could go rook c1 and, and win the c3 pawn, uh, maybe. And if the e4 pawn is taken straight away, I've got knight g5, which isn't simple at all. Okay, he played queen e4. I played knight g5. That was taken, and queen g5 check. Now, I gave up a piece. But after king f7, uh, this position is far from over. It's far from simple. And I'm not going to say I want to be white, but I think, practically speaking, white has equal chances. Now, the engine gives this as equal if you play correctly. I did not. Uh, I took on h5, which is a blunder, after which black is winning again. But for a human, I think that was really hard to see. The way to equalize and or, or to keep the equality was knight c3, bc3, and f4. Queen e3 check, king h1, e4, and now queen takes h5 check, king e7, and b4. That was the only way to stay in the game. Uh, if you see this, congratulations, you're probably 2500. I didn't see it. I played the more human queen h5. And now we have a series of checks. Okay, I went knight e3. This is important because I'm expecting that after uh, after queen f8, he's going to go to c7 and block with the bishop, after which I want to do this and win the bishop. Rook a2, queen f8 check, king c7, queen e7, bishop d7, knight g4. Okay, in this position he blundered. Uh, and after his next move, I'm winning, and I'm winning so clearly that the position is plus 20 for white. He played bishop to d4, and now the game is over. White is just winning. Uh, we were both... He, he had less than a minute. I had two minutes on the clock, I think. This is 90 plus 30, so we do get a 30 second increment, which for me is definitely not enough uh, in a position like this. What he should have played here is either rook takes, uh, which would have been the simplest win, or queen f5, just defending the, the, the bishop in advance. After bishop d4, uh, it's actually not uh, possible for black to defend. I go knight f6, attacks the queen, attacks the bishop. He has to defend with queen f5, but now knight e8 check. If uh, king to b7, then knight to, to, to d6, so king b8 was played. And here, with a minute and a half on the clock, I've got two possible checks, and after maybe 10 seconds, I chose the wrong one and messed up. I mean, deservedly, I didn't win this game. Had I chosen the correct check, I would have won, and definitely not learned as much from this game. This way, it was a very painful draw, and I forced myself to analyze the game several times. Um, of course, the correct way to play is queen to d8. Uh, and after this, black can simply resign. Uh, if bishop to c8, then queen b6. If bishop to b7, which is the only move, then queen c7 check. And after king a8, knight d6. And uh, there is no way to defend uh, mate and the queen. And after queen d8, if king to a7, again, king to b7 loses because of knight d6, uh, then queen c7 check, king to a6, and knight takes d6, again, threatening the queen, threatening mate. So the best move is probably bishop f2, king h1, I don't know, let's say queen h5, I just go queen b7, and king a5, and queen a7, checkmate. I saw that, and I saw that queen d6 was winning as well. It wasn't winning. I just, yeah, I just messed it up. Okay, so I, I went queen d6 check, king a8, knight c7 check. I thought this was game over, and then he played king b7, and I, I ugh, now I have nothing. Now I have nothing, now it's a draw. I have a perpetual check, but... The, the best way to play is knight e6, which I did play, and after bishop e6, d6, he took on f2, and we agreed to a draw. I have a perpetual check, but nothing more. Uh, 
obviously my rook is hanging with check and with checkmate actually so i need to start checking and something like this could happen in the game oh, i mean yeah uh, uh, the worst thing about this tournament is that uh, it was double round every day you had no time to rest and after this i had to go and play the afternoon round like an hour after this which was tough still uh to be honest i should have lost like 30 moves ago i was lucky enough not to lose because my opponent didn't exploit my mistakes and then i returned the favor but by not playing a move that would have won the queen or mated him so a draw probably is a fair result again th this was a very instructive game for game for me uh, please learn from it i hope you got something uh, i'm going to be showing you round five uh, soon uh, tomorrow actually thank you for watching stay tuned for more chess bye bye